Hey everybody. Uh, today we're just going to have a little look at my Garami tank here for a moment while I discuss CO2 and atmospheric CO2 levels. I did a series of videos a little while ago where I experimented with atmospheric CO2 levels to find out whether or not they impacted my tanks. Uh, the reason I did this was because I'm down here in my basement where my fish room is and CO2, for lack of a better way of saying it, is heavier than air and it does settle in lower places. So I actually have some testing equipment that I have from years ago when I was tinkering with some garden plants and I was going to try to supplement them with CO2 uh, to see if I could grow them any bigger or faster. And it really wound up being a lot of money that was worth, you know, nothing more than an interesting experiment. But I did actually learn a lot about atmospheric CO2 levels in my basement down here. So I still have the equipment, and while I don't actually use it for anything, I do still have it plugged in just so that I can keep an eye on atmospheric CO2 levels down here in the basement. Now, when I first started shooting this video a few minutes ago, this is about my fifth take, we were at 900 parts per million. What we're seeing now is a single red light blinking, and that single red light indicates that we are now up to 1,000 parts per million CO2. So the reason I'm shooting this video and the reason I'm talking about it is because it is now getting into the cooler weather and today for example I feel like I've got a little bit of a chill here in the basement so to keep from running expensive space heaters and to keep my tanks from working really hard to stay warm what I will often do is simply light a hurricane lamp and that will take the chill off the room surprisingly quickly and within a few hours it'll be comfortable down here but what will the co2 levels be down here and how much of an impact will that have on my tank so we're still sitting at a thousand right now and what i'm going to do is stay down here so my breath is going to contribute to it and I'm going to leave that hurricane lamp burning for about an hour or two and uh, we'll come back or I'll just wait and I'll see how long it takes to really see a significant difference and then we can maybe go piece by piece or something like that so let's see where this video takes us and right now we are sitting at 1000 parts per million CO2 I've just lit the hurricane lamp and I've just begun breathing down here which uh, adds a lot of CO2 you'd be surprised how much CO2 you put into the atmosphere just by your breath so I'll be back in a little while and we'll see where that counter sits then alright so here we are about one hour in maybe an hour and five minutes something like that I didn't get a real close look at the clock when we started this I just knew that it was roughly five o'clock and it's now six o'clock so give or take a few minutes it's been an hour and we are up to let's see where we are the red light on the left indicates 1000 and then the yellow light on the right indicates 100 so both lights at once is 1100 12 13 and 14 so we're at 1400 parts per million now after approximately one hour so I'm going to let it keep going and we'll check back in another hour, maybe two, and we'll see where we peak out. I've seen it as high as 1900 parts per million down here uh, in the winter time. So uh, sit tight and let's see where we go for the next hour. All right, it is now 730 and while the rate of climb has slowed, it is still climbing. We just moved from 1600 parts per million up to 1700 parts per million and we'll see if we can get right at the beginning of a count cycle so it's now been an hour and a half since we last checked and it's come up another couple of hundred parts per million so we're going to give it just a little longer and we're going to wait and see if we don't sort of top out right here around 17 or 1800 parts per million uh, there is a point to all this and in the final segment rather than looking at the blinking lights We will put some food in the tank here and we'll have a nice look at the grommy tank uh, Without all this reflection in the background now those of you who have noticed a second lantern in the left side of the tank and the reflection over there uh, I did indeed add a second light when I finished the first clip. I said I was going to stay here in the room. I was not able to. So in my stead, I left a burning lantern. And again, I want to stress that none of this is real science. This is I don't have any solid controls or anything like that. 
I'm just tinkering. I'm just sort of getting an idea of what does this and what does that. So, but I do want to do full disclosure and you'll understand that I have had two lanterns down here burning uh, during this last couple of hours rather than me being down here in the room uh, additionally. So if I was down here, especially if I was down here, where as the weather gets colder, I'll probably be over on the treadmill rather than out walking in the woods. And once I start working up a little bit of a sweat, uh, I will really start generating lots of CO2. So as I've said, I've seen it close to 2,000 parts per million down here uh, in the winter time before. So all of that will get tied together as to why that may or may not make a difference in the tank in the final segment, uh, which we'll give it another hour and we'll see what happens. Everybody, I'm going to throw some crumbled up algae wafers in here. Kind of work them down through the plants. Alright, so now that there's some algae wafers in there, it'll give the fish lots of activity for the next few minutes. Um, what is the significance of having the CO2 higher or lower in the room or whatever? What's the big deal about it? Well, you know I have low-tech tanks. I don't have any CO2 injected in them, but I also have pretty lush tanks. And a while back I got to wondering about whether or not uh, the elevated CO2 levels here in my basement had anything to do with why my tanks grew so fast uh, since I don't have injected tanks. And I knew the CO2 levels in the basement were higher, as I said before, from my overwintering of various plants down here and CO2, uh, you know, measuring the CO2 levels with me being in the room and not being in the room. And I got a really good idea of how much CO2 actually accumulates in the basement. Now, I said that CO2 is heavier than air. And what I mean by that is the molecule, the CO2 molecule, is actually has a greater molecular weight than either oxygen or nitrogen, which are the other two gases that you know, uh, comprise the vast majority of what our atmosphere is. So the CO2 in still air will tend to settle towards the bottom of its environment. Now it's not so much denser that it will displace the oxygen or the nitrogen, so you don't have to worry about suffocating in the middle of the night if you fall asleep on the floor in the basement. If you've got a lot of, you know, uh, candles and stuff burning, you may not want to lay on the floor all night because the CO2 could settle and it could raise to levels that might be bad for you. But I don't ever get near levels like that. You need to get well over 2,000 parts per million before you start getting into um, unhealthy levels. And I think it gets up to 4,000 parts per million before you start getting into dangerous levels. So just by me coming up and down the steps, my basement is not completely airtight sealed. You know, there's cracks in my windows and doors, so on and so forth. So you don't have to worry about suffocating or asphyxiating in your basement. Oh, it looks like my striped Raphael there to the left might be coming out and making an appearance. So at any rate, I knew I had elevated levels of CO2 in here, and I wondered if that wouldn't be enough to impact the growth in my tanks. And so I did a series of experiments, and I don't know whether it really is or not. Um, a few numbers that are significant are your normal background levels of CO2 if you're outside are around 300 parts per million. Uh, if you're inside, you might say 400 parts per million since you're in a closed environment. So with levels that are now at 1,800 parts per million, I don't know if I mentioned that, but we have gone up to 1,800 parts per million. It is 8.30 now. It's an hour later. So we're probably getting into the upper end, especially since the room is about 85 degrees now. So whether we're getting any higher or not, I'm turning the lights down uh, because it's getting really warm in here. So as far as I'm concerned, 1,800 is where we've topped off. Now... If your normal background levels are, let's say, 300 parts per million, 1,500 parts per million would be five times normal levels. In your normal fish tank, if you're in your room and you have 300 parts per million, you've probably got about four parts per million dissolved into your tank at the most. Maybe three parts per million dissolved into your tank. It's not a one-to-one -one ratio. It does not equilibrate like that. But, and again, this is just speculation on my part, I don't have the equipment to actually do the testing to find out if I'm right or not, 
but if I've got five times the level in my atmosphere down here, it seems to me that I would that would translate to five times as much of that CO2 would be getting in my tank. So even though I'm not I'm not talking about 1,800 parts per million in my tank, if a normal tank has four parts per million or three parts per million, and now I've got five times that, does that put me up near 15 parts per million? Now, 15 parts per million is about the low end of where you would want to be if you were injecting CO2 into your tanks. You'd want to be up to about 30 parts per million, ideally. But 15 parts per million is apparently where the plants begin to really get hypercharged from the amount of CO2. Now, I don't know whether this is really true uh, 100%. My levels down here don't stay at 1,800 parts per million. You know, often I'll come down here in the morning and they're 800, 900 parts per million. They're usually higher than normal, and I never see them below about 700 parts per million, even if I have the window open in the summertime. If I've got the fan on, you know, actively exhausting the basement and pulling nice cool air through the house, um, then yes, I'll drop all the way down to three or 400 parts per million down here. Normally, however, I'm, I'm between 1,000 and 1,200 usually. So I figure that probably translates to eight or nine parts per million in my tanks. Now again, if 1500 parts per million is where it supercharges and my tanks upstairs where my plants just seem to stay alive but not really grow, my plants down here are somewhere in the middle. So I don't see why having more CO2 in my tank would not affect the growth of my plants. So make what you want of that I don't really know again exactly how all of that works but that's my speculation and based on the stuff I did before um, I did a lot of studies with this I wound up taking water and, and and taking it upstairs and I could actually see it degas overnight and that's another significant point as the more CO2 you have dissolved into your water the more you're lowering your pH dissolved CO2 or CO2 that's been dissolved into water is carbonic acid. So the more you raise the level of carbonic acid or CO2 in your tank, the more you're lowering your pH. So I've actually taken tank water and put it upstairs overnight and I've seen the pH come up significantly. So I know my tanks down here hold more CO2 in the water than my tanks upstairs do. It's just I've already done all the experimenting, I've done all the testing on this and proved all this stuff out. But since, as I've already pointed out, this isn't real science, this is just me tinkering, I can't say definitively that yes, the greater amounts of CO2 down here in the basement do really impact my tank, but I really believe they do, and I've got a lot of circumstantial sort of evidence to support and back that up. Uh, I also wanted to point out that if you are just considering any of this stuff, and again, this is all just food for thought, it's not necessarily anything to do with how to run your tank or maintain your house or anything else, I'm just putting information out there because CO2 does affect your tank. It not only affects your plant growth, but it affects your pH in your water. If you've got elevated levels of CO2 dissolved in your water, you're going to have lower pH. So that may be something to consider if you've got a tank in the basement and you keep having issues with the pH lowering, consider that. Maybe if it's a 10 gallon tank or something, try moving it upstairs for a week and see if suddenly you don't have no more issues with low pH and suddenly your pH is stable around neutral or 7.2 or wherever you think it should be. Again, just food for thought. This is all just information being thrown out there. So at any rate, I'm going to call that the end of this video. It was just something I was tinkering around with today. It was a rainy day, so I thought I would do something. And on that note, keep in mind that as the weather moves into winter, we will be getting more and more uh, videos of more and more interest rather than me just shooting off the random thing between my outings nowadays. So if you're subscribed, you won't miss anything I got coming up. And like I say, you don't want to miss anything I got coming up because it's all going to be good stuff. And I will see you real soon on the next one. Thanks again for watching this one.